guys, I'm Liz, and welcome back to my channel. This video is just going to be a little rant about something that happened a week ago. If you're new to my channel, of course, I will say, like, this isn't my usual content content, I would say, especially since you're seeing just a picture on screen now of my username and what I would usually go over or do here on my channel. However, I just wanted to get this out. I know I'm a, practically a week late to it, but this is regarding Micah Stoffer or Micah and James Stoffer, both of them, since they're both involved with it, but particularly towards Micah. Now, if you haven't heard about this situation, Micah Stoffer is one of those family channel YouTubers here on the YouTube platform and has about 700k approximately, maybe a tad more, subscribers. And as of May 2016, her and her husband already talked about adopting a kid with special needs and so forth and so on, let alone already getting information like, hey, it's going to be a very serious process when raising this child, because come to find out, they're... this child, Hugsley, is his name, is a nonverbal child on the autistic spectrum, or autism spectrum. And approximately with that, she did gain subscribers for her adoption process type videos, which if people make those kinds of videos, I think it's good to get like information out there as far as that, but you could tell that sometimes this is used for views a lot of the time and that bothers me I'll get more into like YouTube in general but it's just something that I'm adamantly against on any platform is to use your child for clout especially since you already have people on platforms like Instagram and TikTok using their young teenage girls for sexualizing them for sponsors and stuff like that, let alone family channels just using their kids being upset or even prank videos or whatever. It just doesn't sit with me in a right way at all. It continues that sour feeling all around. Anywho, they did rehome that child two years later and I say rehome, they practically just gave that child to a different family after that child probably latched onto them and actually grew a bond, especially with his mentality or mental disability. That's going to be something that a lot of kids that do have that will latch on to any family that they can. So this is most likely very traumatic, despite how many times... Micah would like to say, like, oh, it's something that he wanted, or anything like that, and it's just like, he's nonverbal, for one thing. Sure, you could probably read emotions, but for the most part, we don't really know what's going on in their head, especially as someone who takes care of s someone with Down syndrome, and my cousins having, my second cousin having both autism and downs, and that's, like, very low on the spectrum, and it's just, it's a handful to deal with, like, I'm gonna be straightforward, it is a handful to deal with, especially, I'm gonna use my uncle, for example, since I've been helping out with him for years now, since my parents had to work a lot, and that really just, like, caused me to grow up fast, in a sense. It's just like, there are times where it is very difficult to take care of him, and I'm kind of glad that we're finally in a place now where we're getting somewhere where he can go out and be with people who are like him, I guess is the best way to put it, other people with Down syndrome or other mental disabilities, and actually get out and do stuff like activities, like let's say go bowling, or anything of that sort of thing, which is something that he definitely needs in his life, especially since my grandfather, before he passed, he technically secluded Vince a lot, and Vince is my uncle's name, 
and really it was a whole skew of things let alone Vince having seizure episodes which can be very scary to deal with but I still love him nevertheless but it's just like seeing how these people are just using that kids like they literally just ignored what those doctors were saying like hey this is something serious that he has are you sure you're gonna be able to take care of this kid and now you have it where they literally give this kid up and that really rubs me the wrong way like I feel sick from it like physically sick because I already know like as far as for all I know I could have a child that has autism and that would probably scare me but at the same time I wouldn't think for a second to like give that kid up just because of existing health conditions that they will have that just it I'm sorry anyway it's like a lot of stuff with it because like I can easily just go ahead and scream about this all I can but I'm just gonna try to stay calm for this video <laughs> anyway some of the problems I do have is like it this really does remind me of other youtubers that just use their children for clout especially on a social media scale which I'm adamantly against if you're gonna have a child raise that child as you would probably raise it without social media in a way like don't have social media be there like oh my gosh watch me watch me take care of my child watch me do a prank on my child oh there's fake blood ooh woo or anything like that it's just like please just don't do that don't do that please like that stuff mm, it, it bothers me to an extent because that kid's probably not gonna realize like anything as far as learning potential or anything to actually help them out growing up they'll just know like oh my parents are making videos of me haha <laughs> cute and sure you can have funny video moments with your kid or funny picture moments that's something that I'm pretty sure that any parent would do with their child however I think it's terrible whenever you just use your kid as a I would say right now as a metaphorical punching bag or a butt of a joke or even just like your main topic just to get clicks or whatever and it's just like please just don't you can easily like have a family life without doing that kind of stuff and it would probably be less toxic. I really hope that would be the case, at least. Anyway. There were already video surfacing... Videos surfacing... Ugh, of Micah and James technically, like... Restricting... Hugsley a lot. And I thought that was very weird. Especially whenever Hugsley being nonverbal and even so forth would probably have meltdowns whenever he's trying to express how he's feeling and that really like there was a video that surfaced of where Micah gave him a haircut and he he did not like it like sure there's gonna be some kids regardless if they have autism or not that's gonna freak out probably but for the most part like if your kid is clearly not liking what's going on then you should have realized that or even if it's like in the car having a temper tantrum I'm sorry for saying temper tantrum since that's different from a meltdown or having a meltdown let me rephrase that thank you thank you for sticking with me with that little mess up but even with having a meltdown inside let's say going through a drive through and the kids uncomfortable in their seatbelt like, I get uncomfortable with certain clothing on me and all that, and I get icky and not feeling so good. Like, that's something that's a given. But it's just kind of like, if you think about, like, a kid who's trying to express that feeling, they're going to be upset, especially if they're not being pretty much heard, in a sense, if that 
makes any sense at all. I'm pretty sure it does, but... It's... I don't know why people think this is a good idea. Like, if your heart was already in the place to want to adopt a child with special needs, then you really should, as the person who is adopting, or as a potential parent, would know, hey, this child's going to have something that I need to do in order to help that kid. Other than just, like, sitting there and acting like, oh, well, everything's fine, and then behind closed doors, you aren't doing that much fine, I guess is the best way to put it. And there's already, like, resources out there to help people with, like, special needs kids and et cetera, so on. Like, that's something that is out there to literally help. And back to my home life, like, you have it where a lot of people don't raise these kids at all. Like, that's an issue that I have adamantly seen around here. Like, especially, I'm going to use family drama, I guess, as an example. My uncle's oldest brother, or elder brother, or whatever, he doesn't even think to come and see events unless we put out there like hey it's his birthday or anything like that because we we have more of a private life when it comes to things like that and there was this one time that was just this year like I don't know what got into that man's mind but he decides he's gonna show up knowing adamantly like just knowing that my parents are home for one thing like they're not here they're at work they're essential workers we're supposed to be quarantined you're a police officer you you should for instance if anyone wants to like come over even if it's just a friend of mine we have to have it where it's already planned out a bit at least at the very least a couple of days ahead if not a month like that is just a given because we get really busy with doctor's appointments and so forth and so on especially both of my parents are essential workers they wouldn't be able to be here if anything happens unless it's in a dire emergency situation and i understand like i am 18 i can literally just tell my uncle yeah yeah you can come in like have the authority to do that however what i did not appreciate is how he's shown up unannounced like as soon as like i think it was like 12 may no i wouldn't say 12 it was probably like one or two o'clock he calls me while i'm just like doing my own thing cleaning up around the house and all that good stuff and it's like, oh, is your mom home? No. Well, are, are you in Vance's home? Yeah, do, do you need something? Oh, I was just coming over to see Vance. I, I'm sorry, I can't let you in. Like, that was literally how the conversation went because it's just like, I'm personally, like, based on my parents' authority over me, I, I can't let anyone in the house unless we already have something planned with that person that's just a given and i understand that probably sounds kind of crazy but it's just like you can't just come over to someone's house during the time when we're supposed to be in quarantine and think that you have the right to come in and he hung hangs up with me and then calls my mom and i'm like i just went ahead and texted her what happened it was just kind of like she tells me, like, yeah, he's calling me right now. I'm just going to let it go to voicemail. <laughs> like, whatever. Like, don't care. Don't need to. About a couple of days later, maybe about a week, he texts my mom about, like, what happened. And my mom's like, well, you have to talk with my dad, his name, whatever, about that. You have to talk with my husband about that. There we go. That's a better way to say it. 
And he's like, oh, I don't have to talk to him about anything. Vince is my brother. Okay, where were you whenever Grandpa died? Where were you when he died? Where were you to actually want to take care of Vince in the first place? Where were you whenever we already had it set up like, hey, do you want to come and like take him out to go see wrestling so y'all can spend time together? No, you didn't do crap. You didn't do absolutely nothing. Wait, I'm sorry for the poor grammar there, but it, he didn't do crap. Let's put it bluntly like that. And he thinks like he can come in here and have more authority than my own dad or my own mom when we have the legal guardianship over Vince in the first place. Let me put that straightforward. We have the legal guardianship over him and so forth and so on. We think it's nice that you want to come and visit him, but you doing it knowing that my family isn't around is very suspicious to me. It's very sus, as the new term is. It's very sus. And that truly bothers me. Because this is like, I know if he goes to hang out with you at church, at the church that they go to, you're just going to use him as a talking piece. I'm saying you're as reference to my older uncle on my mother's side. It's just kind of like... I already know straight up that he would just use him as a talking piece because that has happened before. It has happened multiple times. And it just... It kind of reminds me of this situation here where this kid was technically just being used for views. Like, that's all it is. Being used like, oh, here's my sympathy points. I'm such a good person. Stuff like that. And it's just, it, it frustrates me so much. I'm sorry that this rant took a while. And I know it's going into detail with what's going on. But it's just like. I can't with people sometimes. Like, this is... So, okay. I know those few seconds are kind of awkward. But anyway, it's... I think I'm done here for now. Like, you kind of get the gist of it, I hope, as a viewer. Anyway, I hope y'all have a good day, and I'll see y'all next time, I suppose. Um, take care.